All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the photometric lights with the radiosity setting. Here I have a little quick scene that I set up and just rendering with the default lights in the scene. I put a white material on everything and we're just really going to look at how to set up the basic radiosity. In this, I'm going to go to my lights and under photometric, I'm going to pick a target light. So when you click on the photometric lights, it gives you the warning that it's going to want to turn on the logarithmic exposure control. The reason it wants to do this is because the photometric lights are 32-bit full float lights, and your monitor cannot properly display these. So when it prompts you, the best thing to do is turn this on. So I'm going to click yes. And then to see these settings, I can go under render. And then here we have exposure control, but you can just click on 8 and it will bring up the environmental settings. And down here below the environment, you have exposure control. We also have the effects, so 8 will bring up this window. We just want to make sure this is on. You can click and get a little preview window for the lights. So we're just going to leave this. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the top view. And in this scene, I have my two windows and I have a bookshelf with a door. I'm going to go and just click, do another little click, and get my target light. So the two clicks, one is for the light and the other one is for the target. I'm going to go and navigate back, rotate around, and here is the light. So I want to grab the light and pull it up, and I want to have it above the target. And I do not have a light in the scene, I'm just going to place it. So I can move the target, I can move the light by clicking on the light. And if I click between the two on the blue line, then I can move the whole unit. So I'm just going to place it in the corner here. Click on the light to make sure it's selected. There we go. And we have different settings we can set up for the photometric light. So I'm just going to put on spotlight right now with my target and take a look at these very quickly and then we're going to go into a photometric web. So we do have our templates if you just want to set up a light bulb. We can pick a light bulb. Um, for us, we're going to go down here under light distribution and I'm going to pick photometric web. And in the last tutorial, we talked about the different photometric web. IES light profiles and I have a few loaded here and I'm just going to navigate up out of valence and go to post top and then in here the second one is a it's an okay looking light this will work so I want to do a quick render and take a look at this by default in 3ds max we do not use the scene light so I'm going to go up under user define sometimes it says something else standard or performance light and shadow and I'm going to change this to illumination use scene lights and now we're able to see the scene light I do want to make sure I have some sort of shadow type on I have area shadows turned on right now and the other thing I want to do is I want to turn on the Kelvin value right now we had a white light so when I turn on my Kelvin value I can make adjustments to this this might be a little too yellow for me but we'll take a look at it once we get there so if I were to go to do a quick render here we have our photometric lights, um, but we're not getting a realistic ambient occlusion or um, we're not getting a realistic indirect lighting scheme right now. So what we want is we want to use in our renderer, and I just have the scanline renderer on. We want to go into the advanced lighting tab. We have two choices here the light tracer and radiosity. Radiosity is a real world lighting. So this is the one we're going to take a look at. When we get in here there's a lot of different settings to adjust. And what you do is you click on start for it to start processing the lights. So it's going to be calculating your direct light and then your indirect light. So as the light hits a surface and bounces. So shadows, you're going to have a bounce light in the shadows. And right now, 
we have by default just the initial setting is 85%. If you're doing any testing and you find that the rendering takes too long, you can lower this. But we're just going to click Start to start to set up the lighting and do a render. So let's render that out. And this is what we're getting by default from this one light in the room. So there are a lot of different settings, but you'll notice that we have a, a more diffuse light. Uh, I have that Kelvin value. Again, it's a little, little orange, just so we have an idea. And I have already clicked F4, so I can see with F4 the geometry in the scene. And we're going to be looking at that shortly, so I'm going to leave that on. So as we go through and we make our changes, the one thing you do want to make sure you click on is this update data when required on start. So when we make changes to this and I click on start again, which should be about here, this will allow us to reset all the parameters to whatever's been changed. Now, with this, I currently do not have any indirect tools set up, so um, we don't have any indirect bounces. So let's go and do this. I want to refine iterations. I'm going to add this to one. I'm going to add one bounce for my indirect lighting, and I'll add one to my direct lighting. And we'll take another render. So we're going to come up here. Hit continue, re-render this, and we're getting about the same result. So when we have our radiosity, it is using the surface geometry um, and storing the indirect data in it. So one of the things that we want is we want to go in and look at the mesh for the radiosity and enable subdivisions of the mesh. And when we do this, it's going to read the mesh maximum size and minimum size, and then it's going to go in and break up the mesh to give us a better indirect result. So I turn that on, and we're just going to leave the default settings. I'm going to click on at the top to start. So we're going to do update and start. And now it's going to update. And you'll see that it subdivided my walls. And I'm going to leave this one, so I'm going to come in here with my render window. And here you have frame, clone frame. So we're going to clone that. I'm going to push it over here, and now I'm going to do another render and see what our results are. So our results are much more blown out. I can do a couple things. One, I can adjust my lighting. And the other is I can go into my exposure control and make adjustments. So here we have our contrast threshold. And with this, the higher your number, the less contrast you get. So let's going to go and let's take this down to, I'll take it down to 20. I'll come back up and do another render. And again, very blown out. I'm going to go into my render settings. We're going to go into our exposure controls. Right now we do have our logarithmic exposure control. And I'm going to take down my brightness. So we'll bring this down to 40. And I do want to do a render preview. So now we've darkened that up a lot. With my contrast we can adjust that, but I do want to take a quick render. And here you'll see we do have a... I know every object in my room is white. Um, but just so we can start seeing what the lights look like. Here we do have a much better result in our shadows. So let me come over to the bookshelf a bit more and zoom in. And I'll just move over this window and take another render. And I do have the bookshelf a bit away from the wall a bit with an outlet. There we go. And this is the result we're getting from our brightness at 40. So it was at 65 by default. Let's bring it up to 50. Take a quick render. I'm going to bring that down. Back to 40. 
and adjust our contrast. Let's pull our contrast up. A little too high, 45. And it's all just a matter of making adjustments. But we do have nice diffuse shadows right now. I have a bit of noise. So we can play around with um, our radiosity settings in a second. Let me bring this up to 60. And that's a pretty good render. So we're getting more detail into this room. We're not as blown out. And we are getting nice grays on our shadow. So I could play around a little bit more with this and adjust our midtones. But I'm fine with my exposure. And we can come in. And with our render parameters, we can reuse the direct luminosity. Take a look at that. And I can start messing around with this mesh to store more data in the mesh as well. But you'll see you get a much more realistic lighting scheme from using the radiosity. So again, the mesh size, if I feel I'm not storing enough data, we are getting a little bit of noise. I'm going to do two iterations. That's pretty good. All right, so that's what we're getting from our radiosity render.